Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about quadrant streak, also known as the streak plate method. Before we get started, make sure you find the URL in the description below where you can find a bunch of free study notes, including a picture of the finished board with all the notes filled in, um, and also remember to subscribe. So let's go ahead and get started with the quadrant streak. It has two major purposes. The primary purpose is to isolate a pure culture so a pure culture of some microbial species. Almost always this is some bacterial species because as we see, um, it's necessary for the growth to kind of stay in a local area and to form colonies and bacteria do that well. So this is usually for bacterial species. And it's to isolate a pure culture from a mixed culture of multiple species. So basically, how do you go from a plate that looks like this, that might have multiple bacterial species on it, maybe even like some, you know, some mold, that's what I drew in red right there. And how do you go from that to a petri plate, uh, petri plate, petri dish, that is a pure culture, where everything growing on it is the same species. That's what the quadrant streak is for. The secondary purpose is really about maintaining that pure culture. So a quadrant streak is also used to maintain a species in pure culture for lab uses or for further study. In my micro class, I have students, they go out and they swab something in the environment and they get plates that look like this. And then they have to take um, individual colonies from here and make a quadrant streak to get that pure culture. And then throughout the semester, they'll continue to do what we call subculturing, meaning they're taking colonies from a plate that's kind of gotten old, where the, the growth isn't very healthy anymore, and they're moving it over. They're doing another quadrant streak to kind of revive that culture and keep it, keep it fresh, basically. So that's the sort of the secondary purpose. In general, though, if you're asked for the purpose on an exam, the primary purpose is the one you want to give, to isolate a pure culture, one species, from a mixed culture. Now, ultimately, how you do this, the goal is to spread what we call the inoculum, that just means like the, the single colony that's picked up and moved over. The goal is to get all of those bacteria from that one single colony spread out. And I'll talk about how to do that in a second. But to spread the inoculum, the contents of that single colony that you're trying to grow in pure culture, over the surface of the auger, usually in four sets of streaks, one per quadrant. And this is where the method takes its name. So if you look at some of the streak patterns I've got here, I've got uh, you know three different ones drawn, drawn up here. All of these are good, so I've got a check mark here. Uh, different people will have different um, sort of different patterns that they like to use. I think this is the one you see most commonly like in the textbook where you've got four sets of streaks and the goal is to is to get bacterial growth that looks like this. Some people will use kind of a, a quadrant pattern like this. I actually like to do this one where you see I've got a fifth set of streaks, not exactly a quadrant anymore, but I'll pull a fifth set over into the center just to use like all of the available space and to increase the likelihood that I do get, uh, you know, colony growth and not just bonds. So spread the inoculum over the surface of the auger, usually in four streaks, one per quadrant, to spread or thin it out to result in well-spaced colonies. And to do this with aseptic technique, that is, without introducing contaminants. So again, when I do this with my students, I want to see, um, you know, I actually have a rubric that I grade their quadrant streaks on. And one of the things on the rubric is that they have to use most of the surface of the auger. Another thing on the rubric is that there need to be well-spaced colonies. You know, these right here, these up here, they're, um, they're not as accessible as the ones down here. So the goal is to get 
somewhere in the streets. And sometimes students, if they've taken just a very small colony, sometimes they have well-spaced colonies here and they have like hardly any growth down here at all. Others, they've got lawns, 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 and it's maybe only in that little fifth set of streaks that they get a few, a few colonies in there. And it just depends on how large the original inoculum is and how good of a job they've done at spreading it across the plate. And then, of course, also on that rubric is about contamination. I, I want to see no contamination for a full score. So now let's kind of take a look at the procedure here. Pretend that you've got a mixed culture. Maybe it's a mixed culture because you've taken some kind of environmental sample, or maybe it's a mixed culture because you were trying to grow something in pure culture, but you've got contamination in there. Either way, you can take the colony that you care about, the species that you care about, and move it over onto another plate, perform a quadrant streak, or sometimes I just call it a quad streak, to get your pure culture. And so how do you do this? Well, the procedure is to start with a sterile loop. This might be like a sterile plastic loop that you've ordered from a company, or it might be a wire loop that you sterilized in a Bunsen burner, but using a sterile loop to select one colony. I'm gonna put that in here, right here one colony. Remember the goal here is to get a pure culture. If you select more than one colony um, and you are getting, especially you know, if the two colonies are two different things, then you're not going to get a pure culture. So use a sterile loop to select one colony. Then you make each set of streaks. Now this is the really important part. You've got to start each set of streaks by contacting the previous streak. So what does this mean? Um, in order to spread things out, and in order to go from lawns to sort of a lot of, of, of closely clustered, dense colonies to well-spaced colonies, you've got to be spreading it out, getting kind of less and less dense with each quadrant. So pretend like this is my loop, okay? And I've sterilized it in a Bunsen burner. It glowed red hot. I wait for a moment for it to cool enough. And then I want to choose a colony to start with. And I don't want to choose, you know, assuming I've got a bunch of different stuff on here, assuming it's the little bitty black colonies that I care about. I don't want to try to get that one or that one or that one because they're so close to other growth. I want to find the, the, the colony that I'm going to be able to select easiest without contaminating my loop on the other stuff on the plate. So I might actually go for like that one right there, maybe that one right there, that one right there. Just um, they're kind of easily accessible. So you pick it up with your loop and then you make, I'm going to put a little one here, um, a one in a circle. You make your first set of streaks, just streak, 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 streak. Then if you're using a wire loop, you can re-sterilize it in the Bunsen burner, let it cool again. If you're using a plastic loop, you can just kind of like um, flip the loop a little bit so that you're using a slightly different surface of that loop to make the second set of streaks. But here's what I mean by, I'm going to give this kind of a double underline, by contacting. Um, I'm going to draw an arrow right here with a star. The second set of streaks starts by contacting the previous set. That's because you've sterilized the loop again. So you want to pick up um, a little bit of bacteria just from, from the first set of streaks right there and then spread it out farther. So I would contact that first uh, set of streaks one time and then maybe make a few other lines, a few other lines in that set of streaks that don't contact the original set. Re-sterilize the loop, come back, and then do it a third time. But again, you're wanting to, I'm gonna do another star here. At some point in that initial, you know, the first thing you do in that third set of streaks, I forgot to label, this one's number two, this one's number three. The first thing you do with each set of streak is to make some contact between the loop and the previous bacteria that was struck in the previous set of streaks. So pull that down for a third set, re-sterilize the loop, and then again, you know, touching the space where your loop pulled, pulled out some bacteria in the third set, you want to make the fourth set, right? And I've already said sometimes I even kind of 
squeeze in a fifth set just to make sure that I definitely am going to get down to well-spaced colonies. And then once you've done this, wrap it in some parafilm, stick it in an incubator. You want to incubate it at the appropriate temperature. So basically, you know, whatever you're trying to, to grow, um, it may have an optimal temperature and you want to set your incubator to that optimal temperature. And then we always store these in the incubator upside down. Um, upside down. That's so that any condensation collects in the lid of the plate and doesn't like drown the, the bacterial culture. So that's how you do a quad streak. I've got a ton of playlists that I think you'll find really useful for your microbiology class. How to Learn All Those Micro Stains has videos on like the gram stain, uh, the acid fast stain, endospore stain, flagella stain, capsule stain, all that good stuff. Bacterial growth media has a bunch of videos on different kinds of media. I think like mannitol salt auger, McConkie auger, EMB auger, all that kind of stuff. And then microbial, um, sorry, microbiology diagnostic tests has lots of different diagnostic tests, things like the Kirby-Bauer test, catalase test, coagulase test, oxidase test, all those different tests you'll be learning about in your microbiology lab. So check out those playlists. Remember to subscribe for more free biology study videos. Grab that link in the description box below that will take you to a folder where you can get a whole bunch of free biology study notes, including a picture of the final board. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching Biology Professor. See you next time.